Hi, Mina. Hi, Satyavani. It's good to see you. Good, good seeing you. <laughs> Michael's getting ready to sign on. So um, just give me two seconds. I'm just going to put myself on mute um, and shut my video so I can shut the door because Michael and I are right next to each other. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I think I have to start my video. And Satchivani has disappeared. <laughs> Mina, I hope you're doing better today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am. Glad to hear you. I hope Thank everyone you else is well. <laughs> Let's see. I just want to share the screen or the presentation. Well, I'm already sharing that. So let's go to slideshow, play from start. All right, we're here. I'm just waiting for Satchivani to come back and then we'll we'll commence. And we may have you know a couple other people join us. I'm not sure who's all on at the moment. Uh, sometimes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of us, I guess, yes? All right. So I hope you're... Uh, some of you I know are already planning to come. Some of you are thinking about coming. So hopefully this evening we can answer some questions and you'll be enthused enough to say, I'm definitely going to do it. Because I think it will be a marvelous experience. It always is. I mean, it's one of my favorite places to go around on this planet. So we titled it An Experiential Retreat in the Natural World. And it's focused on breathing and meditation and as I used to say here, ancient origin, life skills today. So the skill set will be drawing from the yogic, the Buddhist, and the Taoist traditions. So we can think about those two, at least two of the principal uh, places where civilization began on our earth today. And these practices tracing back to those times and being readily applicable in every moment of our days. And so when we're finding ourselves stressed or in need of some rejuvenation, these are the kinds of things that you'd want to do. Some of you will have had some prior experience with maybe a little bit of it. Um, some of you may want, um, will be introduced to maybe all of it is brand new. And some of you might um, simply uh, be working on developing a, a greater affinity for using it and teaching it so that is really kind of the end and we'll talk more about that as we move through this and at any point in time if you have questions don't be shy um so maybe for some of you who have never met me i'm michael uh so one of the principals presents by and sachivani um and i so i'm not uh I, I don't want to, to put anybody on the spot, but um, you can, if you have your images on, you can see one another. And if you choose to be more uh, <clears throat> random or disappeared, you're welcome to do that as well. Okay. Michael? Yes. If I can interrupt for one second, I'll monitor the chat. So if any questions pop up, I'll just let you know. Very good. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And hello, again, Darren, so hello, Prajna, Carla, Nicole. Nicola, Ryan, Mina, so good to see all of you. So we're going to move to Costa Rica. And these are the principal places of which we will be staying or visiting. Um, to the left there is Paco. It's on the West Coast, Pacific Coast. And it's a beautiful surfing community. And it's nestled right in the mountains and then the beach. And so when we get to the schedule, a lot of people in the past have chosen to take surf lessons. It is um, a marvelous place to do it. And then just down the way to the South is one of the best surfing regions where they have international competitions annually. And so Hako is, is quite the place to go to experience that. It's also a wonderful beach to walk along. I believe it's about a mile and a three quarters, something like that. And so to just go down there and enjoy that if you don't want to get into the surf. Uh, and I just like to go swimming there too. So that's that's another fun thing. Then it's in the center here. 
we have, so let me go back to Hako for a moment. That's where we'll be staying. And we're just removed from, from that core. So it's about a five minute um, bicycle ride or taxi cab. And then you can also walk it in 15 minutes if you choose to do so. And you scroll down and come up through the town onto the beach. The next uh, image is uh, Manuel Antonio, one of the principal national parks. And I love to go here because it is, uh, it's so pristine and there are no motorized vehicles allowed except for emergency transport or if someone is disabled, then they will help bring you to a point. But you have no access to it from, from really back kind of where it says the locations out to this point. So there's a beautiful white sandy beaches on either side for swimming. That is a marvelous hike around this island. I should say island peninsula. The um, full of wildlife, the monkeys, the crocodiles, and yes, you can swim. The crocodiles mind their own business. The iguanas, the raccoons, uh, you name it, you might find it. I always find my little armadillo friend when I go on the walk, the hike. I've seen them each year I've been there, so I always look to see if they'll still be there. Uh, so that's another place. And we will spend a day there and their facilities as well. So we get some food, we take it with us. Um, we go out, we can have food as well. There are restrictions on what you can bring in because you don't want to, the animals to get a hold of it. Uh, as it's not good for their diet, which is always amusing to me because people can eat them, but they don't let the animals actually have it. So we come then to the far right, and this is Tortuga Island, and it is set out in the Pacific. So we take a catamaran there on one day, and it is an all-day event. And again, named for tortoise, it looks like a tortoise. You can't really see the whole island here. I zoomed in on it. But the beach down in the forefront there is where the catamarans land. Again, facilities, their toilets and things like that. It's a beautiful hike uh, for, you know, it takes you about an hour or so if you want to hike the whole mountain that's there. Uh, if you want to go around, it's a little bit more rugged. You can kayak around swimming, there's snorkeling, all of those kinds of things that also go on uh, while one is there. Lunch is provided there too. And it's a beautiful sail for about an hour and 45 minutes, two hours out into the Pacific. And then you get to enjoy the water if you like the ocean like I do. Uh, and then you get to get into it even better. So flora and fauna, Costa Rica, there's so much. It is simply said one of the most diverse places in the world. Um, and in fact, it is in terms of its size, it is the most diverse. And so on the, throughout the experiences, you would interact with all of the things that are shown here. And in the property in Hako, typically we have toucans. The capuchin monkeys come down to the swimming pool. And we have the palms, the butterflies, the sloth, we'll see it, Manuel Antonio. Uh, they're always make themselves present. And we have guides for that as well to help us identify them. And we usually get some really great photos of them. And usually more than one. It's quite often, I think we've seen almost always at least six, which is quite phenomenal. And both the two and the three toad sloths. So that's also quite exciting if you get to see them. Um, not many people do unless they go to places like this. And we have the volcano in the background. Um, you would see this when you were on the transportation from the airport. And then also when we're going south to Manuel Antonio, likely to see um, one of the volcanoes, assuming that it's a clear day. And this time of year in the March, it's typically beautiful. So the transportation itself, you fly in to the airport in San Jose. And then we will get one of the vans, typically down below here on the lower left. Those are the kinds of things that people come in. Maybe they come in a couple of people at a time or there's a small group. Depending upon size, there'll be a van that will pick you up once you exit the airport. And then they'll traverse like a two-lane road, like you see up here in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, Costa Rica does not have major highways, per se. Uh, there are a few in the city. But outside of that, it's principally two lane roads, windy roads, um, very well kept, uh, but they are windy. And so that's one of the things that you know keeps it pristine and interesting 
uh, always some new vantage to see. So you'll be going from the mountainous region down to the coast. So hence, this is actually a, a good example of the road you would be on. Then we have the catamaran below. This is typically the catamaran we take, and it's actually in this image parked uh, or moored uh, just off the beach in uh, on Tortuga Island. So it holds about mm, around 50, 60 people uh, up above, down below in a protected area. And then you can sit on the side or the back if you like, there's seating there as well. Uh, so it's uh, a marvelous, marvelous vessel to be on. Quite fast, you like to get wet, you hang out on the sides. And Captain Jimmy is fantastic. Yes. So this is the center where we like to hold these events and they have a beautiful heated pool. The grounds are phenomenal for walking. And then down below in the lower left, this is the outdoor eating area. So here's where we would have our meals. Sometimes we have meetings in this area as well. We have an indoor yoga facility here. So <laughs> it's actually not two levels. But <laughs> the way the photo is taken is just a juxtapose. So we have, um, it's glassed in, it's air conditioned. And it's uh, you know, so, so you have fresh air as well as the beautiful natural light, um, hardwood floors, and and then the local um, wood around as well. Up above, it's in the tree line, and the, well, the tree line, yeah. So it's the property itself is set on a mountainside, so it starts off low and then it works its way up, and then it goes way up into the mountains. So hence the preachers come down too when they're interested and interacting. This is where we often have at the yoga studio, a lot of the monkeys like to come and check out what's going on. And so it's quite pleasant. We usually take a little break if we're having a session so you can interact with them as too. Um, are there are other you know beings that come there as well. We've had our friends, the spiders and scorpions and, you know. The toucans. Uh, yeah, the toucans, you know, so <laughs> make their present zone as well. But it's, again, it's taken care of. It's, it's super clean. There are a couple of washrooms there. It's actually also the spa is there too. So if anybody's interested in spa treatments, they're just on the, um, to the right. Uh, and then we have rooms. It's an example of the rooms. The rooms are all tile. Everybody will have their own bed. Two people to a room. There's a large washroom in every room. Hot water, as I say, plenty of windows. Um, very clean uh, housekeeping takes care of it daily. Uh, so it's and it's easy to keep clean because it's tile, so durable, quiet, and it looks out on the grounds itself. So typically these rooms, the monkeys often come down and you will hear them rummaging for fruits in the early morning. And generally speaking, people like to get up and go out and interact with them. So and of course, birds, if you're a bird person, we've had folks come just because they want to do their birding. So then the emphasis, and this is the one where, you know, if it's, you're not sold on Costa Rica itself, you just love to travel, then you say, well, what the heck am I going to get out of this? And it's an immersive experience. So one of the things that we know as educators and trainers is that so often in our regular world, we're, we're constantly being pulled, you know, one way or the other, because we go home at the end of the day, and maybe we have a few hours of which we can be together, but we don't really have a concerted uh, time to spend. So the immersive experience is absolutely essential to really get away from all of those things in our modern world that pull us away from the practice, that pull us away and keep us from really developing good, healthy habits. So by virtue of having this kind of an experience, you are in an immersive environment, 24 hours a day. Everything is handled for you. Um, yes, if you decide to go to town, you're still not going to be in the States. So you're going to find that the language is not typically the one you hear all the time here. And you will find that the type of vehicles, everything that is there is different from what you would experience here, including the food that you would see and that you would perhaps choose to sample the practice. So we're going to be focusing on Indian yogic, Buddhist, and Taoist breathing and meditation skills. Very old traditions. Um, there will be pieces that are put together. 
that will help uh, add to what you already know, um, that will help you to develop further depth in what you know. Um, and they will, I've wanted to bring the, the three kind of orientations, so again, coming from India, uh, and of course, coming from China, and then the countries that are right in between them together for this. Um, we say that the value of this, it's simply timeless. It's readily applicable in our daily world today. Uh, if one is really going to be well-balanced and centered, learning these skills and applying them for yourself is so essential, so important. The benefit, again, I put down here, personal cultivation, healing, and modeling for whomever you meet. So the, the personal cultivation is the key part, because in order to to truly derive the benefit and to be healthy and happy, you must do it yourself. You can't have someone else do it for you. So this is that clear spiritual component. And then the healing, if you really want to heal, the meditative and breathing parts are critical as well. You simply can't do it. You can get medicines, you can go see all these therapists and everything, but unless they're helping you to learn to breathe properly and giving you some basic skill set for meditation, it's not going to work. And it's certainly not to work. Maybe I should rephrase that slightly. I'll say it's not going to work as effectively as it could, or it simply won't work. And then finally, modeling for whomever you meet. That is also so important because as your energy changes, then you are actually giving off something that is more positive for everyone you come into contact with and for the world that is in a great deal of need for having healthy, spiritually centered and balanced individuals. It's suitable for anyone who's desiring to live more fully. You cannot, in my view, go to a place like this and be unhappy or come away without feeling rejuvenated. I just don't think it's possible. <laughs> I've never seen it yet. So maybe I could always be disproved, but I think it's a tough one. Then it applies directly to those who are pursuing the 200 or 500 hour YTT. Um, if you're pursuing the 200 hour Qigong certification or generalized Taoist lifestyle program with me. And for those who simply want to expand their life skills and nurture their spirit. So once again, it really is suitable for anyone, any age, anybody who wants to to more further their their overall well-being. Michael, may I add a few things? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So in terms of the um the applying piece, I know some folks are here that are interested in pursuing their initial 200 hour YTT. What Michael and I have done at the Zen Spot Institute and Prajna is one of our faculty as well, who's on board here. Um, we're dividing up our 200 hour uh, program. So this is one third of the program, the meditation and the pranayama focus. And then we will have um, another setting for the actual asana learning and practice. And then we will have another setting for the um, philosophy and, uh, and all of that. Those that are pursuing a 500 hour, this is um, with us. This is one of your um, required uh, modules that you would do. So this would be um, participatory um, for you. And I know that there's some folks that are getting ready to finish their 500 hour program with us. So this would be um, one of those things that kind of seals the deal. Um, and then of course, as Michael pointed out, um, his Qigong certification, uh, as well as the Taoist program. And we are, um, even for those of you that are not falling into any one of those categories outside of just having an amazing retreat, we are also providing a separate certification for um, meditation and pranayama instructors. So um, that will be, you know, another another piece um, that uh, that falls under the institute. So um, and you don't have to have you don't have to be interested in any of those things. We just wanted to I just wanted to clarify so that folks understood, you know, if they were pursuing something where that kind of falls. So great, thank you, Sanjivani. So then. What is the daily schedule like? Well, <laughs> I had to choose the toucan here. And if you notice right there in the toucan, he's got his little watch and says Tico time. Because in Costa Rica, that's one of the things you learn very quickly. It's known as Tico time. And what we consider to be timely is not at all how they operate. So you have to take it somewhat with a, uh, you know, I put down some sort of general things here. 
but that's always open to <laughs> being modified as well. So normally what happens is that we say, you will awaken to the sounds of nature. There will be birds, there will be monkeys, there will be something that will catch your attention. And that often I found <laughs> when we're there, people are up at 6 a.m. You say, oh, I could never get up at 6 a.m. But people do. And uh, now others will stay. They'll say, no, I want to sleep in. And so that is fine. We don't want to start too early. So we would say 7.30 is like enough time because typically you will have been awakened by something by that time. And so you can make your way up to the yoga studio and on the way, get some tea or coffee or something like that. And so we will then do the practice, a practice in the morning, an hour and a half, because we want to have the asana piece, the pranayama piece, and the meditation piece. Because remember, those are the three key parts, regardless of what area we're talking about, the three key parts, parts of, of what yoga entails. And so when I say the three, you know, if we're talking Hindu yoga, Buddhist yoga, Taoist yoga, it all has to have those three components. Then we have breakfast from 9 to 10.30. Seminar following that, of which then there will be, we'll have it, like some, some reading materials to discuss, some um, applied practicing techniques and things that we will do. And then we will have free time. And free time for you two, again, to read, to practice, to simply decompress. <laughs> because we know you're coming from where you've been, you know, the Western world and everything. And even, you know, it's so important to have that time to do something. So maybe, you know, you want to go to the pool. Maybe you just want to sit and meditate the whole time. Maybe you need to sleep more. Maybe you want to go on a hike. Maybe you want to go zip lining. Maybe you want to go for surf lessons. I mean, I don't know. There's so many things that you could decide to do. So you would have that time from one to six. Then we would come back and for a half hour, we'll just have a little reflective check-in of which you can share if you want, you know, where we talk about, well, what was your day like? What's come up for you? What are your thoughts? And then we'll have dinner from 6.30 to 8. And then we have quiet time socializing or bedtime beginning at 8. And again, that's up to you what you want to do. So as I say, Tico time, I <laughs> put some, some basic times around this to frame it. But that's, yeah. That's kind of, so, you know, it's really flowing with nature because this is the kind of the way nature's operating as well that time. So let's continue on to sort of the investment. I think all of you probably seen the, the cost piece that we have there, but we're asking for those of you who haven't made a deposit already that we're looking for that thousand dollar deposit to secure the place or space. Um, then there's uh, the $14.99.50 due on December 1st. And again, the second payment due March 1st. And then the total being that for double occupancy. And what does that include? Well, that includes your room and board. Um, obviously, the so all the food and that, you know, the, the bathroom, hot water. Um, the food is organic, fresh, local produce. Um, we have options. So if people are not vegan, don't worry. <laughs> they have other options there. So there's, you know, um, vegetarian, clearly, but you can have, in addition to just the vegetarian, there's fish and there's chicken. Um, and if someone absolutely had to have something else, that can also be arranged. Um, there's clean potable water, coffee and tea that are always provided. There's usually some juices um, that are made oftentimes from the property itself. Um, you have access to the secluded and secure resort where the grounds are groomed. There's um, walkways, beautiful walkways around. So a lot of people like to just do strolls around. Um, so I don't know the distance, but it, you know, it's, it's quite good. You could actually easily do uh, a good, you know, I don't know, walk your five miles if you want to do that. You can maybe I, think, I think one loop is actually like a quarter mile. Right. Is it a quarter so mile? Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so then if you did four and then you're in a mile and yeah. Um, and then uh, there's two hiking and beach excursions, Manuel Antonio National Park and Tortuga Island, as I mentioned. We'll have the daily yoga with movement, breathing and meditation. There'll be the shared conversation and spiritual cultivation. You'll have the ran trip transportation from the airport um, to the retreat center and back. 
uh, as well. You'll have easy access via walking, bicycle, or cab to the local beach town and to the surf lessons if you choose you want to go and partake of something like that. Uh, the bicycles are kept on site, so you can just grab one and ride in and ride back. Um, locks are available too. Um, you do uh, get uh, laundry service, discounted laundry service on site and complimentary yoga laundry and cleaning as well. And there's free Wi-Fi. So the only the additional charge for you, you know, is you have to get there. And then there's, if you want travel insurance, you can get that. Um, any personal things that you feel you might want to purchase while you're there and personal tipping. And I can tell you, you know, normally we um, and that's optional, but you know, if you decide you want to leave the people who are cleaning your room, you know, like a dollar a day or something like that, that's one thing. And then you can also do um, with the uh, the servers or the the cooking staff. You know, we often um, I sort of think you know, there's several people involved with that, and I normally say something in the neighborhood of you know ten twenty dollars per. So like you could say kitchen staff, here's twenty dollars that I'm giving. Um, personal servers, you want to give them $20 uh, at the end of the, the session, uh, you can do something like that. If you want to do more, you're welcome to. But that's sort of like you know, kind of maybe a general. But oftentimes people say, you know, I really want to give them <laughs> a nice tip. I mean, they've been great. They work hard and all of that too. So again, I'll put something together. If you have any questions, don't be shy about asking. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about that. Uh, we can go on to why should I sign up now? Well, because it's just, I think one of the things to say is that this content is simply essential to being held happy and healthy today. I'm actually doing a program um, next, uh, well, starting in the winter time for the university faculty and staff, specifically on meditation and pranayama. Their Bronco Fit folks have found that there's such a need. So they've asked me to put something together. So it's kind of nice that I'm going to be able to do that as well. And so here again, a recognition of the importance. And I think across the board, if you pick up any publication, paying attention to any of the research that is out there, they will show that there's such a need for these kinds of skills to be applied for people and to be put into practice on a daily basis. And that's one of the things why we're helping, especially for people who are, you know, coming into this and have been stressed, have been anxious or frustrated. Uh, for people who are teachers who are working with others who simply want a skill set for themselves and to share with others. And then just, as I said, anybody you come into contact with, change your energy and it will help to change and help other people as well. Uh, Costa Rica offers some of the best vantage points on the earth and the chance for this close up experiences with the natural world. Yes, I mean, <laughs> you, there, as I said, you simply cannot have a better experience than to be so upfront and personal with all of these different um, creatures and plants. Uh, and finally, this survey research that is out as it relates to, as I put here, 60 and 70 year olds today, when they were asked if they had any advice for younger people, their response was, if you have the chance to travel or to add something to your home, travel. For there is no better educational and life affirming experience that you can get or will get. So if you think about maybe grandparents, or if you have older parents, and if they have had the opportunity or occasion to, to travel in their lives, perhaps they would share something very similar with you. But this was, I thought, a nice affirming piece to just keep in mind that we so often get wrapped up in the material and we neglect our spiritual development and we neglect our experiences with others from other cultures and with other creatures. And when you have an opportunity to do something like this, I highly recommend that you don't let it go, go by. And from personal experience, there's probably two instances in my life that I did not take advantage of. <laughs> and I still to this day say, why did I not do it? <laughs> so, so that I think is my my summary, I don't believe I have another slide. I do not. 
So if there's any any questions, I can go back to any slides if anyone's curious about anything. Any thoughts? Anybody? Well, if I can share my most uh, recent experience with um, Michael and Satyavani to all of you, and I think a lot of you either know them or have traveled with them before, but um, my experience in India just this last summer was phenomenal. And Michael, you did such a great job of organizing. Sorry, Bonza is mining in the background. Um, <laughs> such a great job of organizing and um, the two, I mean, the two of you just, it, it was done masterfully and it was a trip of a lifetime. I mean, it was like Satyavani told me, you come with on this trip, it will change your life. And <clears throat> yeah, I would agree. So, so if that, you know, gives anyone on the fence, um, a little bit more of a, a reason to go, it's, it's a phenomenal experience and I've always wanted to go to Costa Rica. So. Thank you, Prajna. <clears throat> Thank you, Prajna. And for the record, um, Prajna will be one of the faculty on, um, so it'll be Michael, myself and Prajna, um, orchestrating all of these things. And so. Um, you'll get uh, diverse perspectives because we're three very different people. And um, I think it'll be just really wonderful. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, are the hikes safe there in Costa Rica? That, you said the hikes, Mina? Mm hmm Yes, they, they're very safe and the trails are well kept. So the, the locations now the, on Tortuga Island, the trail is, is kept. It's more rugged, but it, this, it's very safe. So you don't have to feel like, you know, oh, no, something will happen. Um, on Manuel Antonio, it's amazingly well groomed and kept. And of course, you know, I mean, when storms come in and things like that, there might be debris that falls across, but the park services are very good about taking in and cleaning things up. So uh, all ages you will always find on these hikes and all abilities. The only time that they're a bit restrictive is if someone was really uh, impaired so that they had to be in a wheelchair or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And well, Antonio, they've done a great job of accommodating that. Uh, but in general, uh, everything is still very accessible. And But the hikes are nice. And you can decide on a more strenuous hike or a less strenuous one if you choose to go. Uh, so Manuel Antonio, it's, you know, it's, these are um, kind of, how should I say, they look like they're just trees and flat, or maybe it doesn't look so flat, but it's actually, they're actually mountains and hills. And Tortuga Island, you can see to my right that that's a little bit more um, pronounced in terms of the height and that. But uh, the, as I say, the trails are groomed and they're marked and so you can follow them, yeah. And you don't have to worry about being snatched by any wild animals or anything like that. You know, well, they're there. They don't they don't harm. And if there was sightings or something like that, the park rangers would would do, yeah. Okay. Mention. So and now same is true with swimming. As I was mentioning earlier, you know, you might find that they're, you know the big iguanas and crocodiles that are down here. In fact, down here, I'll just move. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see if I can use my little pen here. So uh, uh, laser pointer, there we go. Okay, so right here. So down here, this part of Manuel Antonio. So the beach is swimming beach, right? On both sides. And then there's this pond here in the center. And sometimes the crocodiles hang out in here and down at this end. And so, but as I say, the park rangers are where there's never been any incidences where they've gone after anyone or anything because there's plenty of fish in that. But, you know, people just be aware. And, and so, yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention, Michael, um, is for everybody who's on this call, once everybody has been secured with their registration, we always have a minimum of two pre-departure calls. So, um, we will get everybody together who is going on the trip. We'll do a Zoom call like this and work out, you know, any logistics. You have emails that come on a consecutive basis, um, mostly mostly for me on that end. I handle the the registration and 
the financial piece of it. Michael handles all of the logistics. Um, and also if you need assistance with flights, especially for those of you that are in Boise, if people want to fly together, um, Michael is masterful at assisting with that process as well. So we, we kind of handle things soup to nuts. It's not like, hey, thanks for coming on the trip and we'll see you when we, when we all get there. Like if there are things, we make sure that it's a step-by-step -step process. If you need airline tickets, um, you know, we can, we can assist in that process and then um, make sure that you have all the information from the point that you hit the ground to who's picking you up um, and transporting you. Um, we always get um, a, uh, a group chat going as well so people can stay in contact with one another um, throughout the trip um, as well as before and after. And like I said, we always have a couple of pre-departure calls. So typically um, what we'll do is we'll have probably a pre-departure call sometime in um, January and then another one about a week before we're getting ready to leave. And I would also, um, in, I was asked by one of the individuals going uh, on this about airline tickets. And she said, well, when's the best time to purchase it? And I said, well, really wait until the new year as we get closer in there. You don't want to be purchasing tickets um, too far in advance unless you say, oh, this is an incredible deal. And then at the same time, you don't want to wait until the last minute because then they can be relatively expensive. So just thinking about that, also making sure you do have a passport, a current passport with at least six months uh, at the um, by the time you arrive, to technically by the time you leave, it's at least six months on, on the passport before it expires. So that would be the other thing to just make sure that you have from this end. And you do not need a visa. Correct. You do not need a visa if you are a U.S. citizen. There are no requirements of, you know, quarantine or anything like that, shots, any of that, that the immunization. Yeah. So. Um, just so everybody knows, in the chat section of this, I put the link to um, these details, as well as the registration, um, which is at the, the bottom of the page. I will say that we... We take the deposits um, via credit card, but the two other installments have to come in the form of cash or check because we have um, an exchange rate. If you really need to pay by credit card, you can, but just be aware that you're gonna have to pay about 7% interest on top of it because of the exchange rate, so. And the March time frame is one of the most beautiful time frames because it's what they consider to be their their sort of dry season. So the chances of having the amazing weather, uh, maybe probably no rain. <laughs> it would just be sunny every day. Uh, is is there? Uh, we've been there at all times of the year, and you know when you get into the rainy season, you typically have rain every day and electrical storms, um, which are quite phenomenal. But in March, it's uh, beautiful, sunny, sunny days. Anybody else have any other questions? I think so that you might have answered my question in a general sense, realizing there'll be follow up after this, just if we were aiming to fly in um, to land in the same date and time to assemble into a van, but we can iron out those details going forward. Absolutely. Um, communication. I didn't know if people were using like the WhatsApp app or people were getting little yeah cards. We, to... use, we, use, we use Telegram. So, okay. and, and you're familiar with Telegram as an AWP, so it'll be an easy thing for you. Okay. I'll just, I just create a Costa Rica group and I add everybody in there who um, okay. is going on the trip. And, uh, and like I said, Michael is a, fant a fantastic uh, travel agent. We, we call him the spiritual <laughs> concierge. So um, Michael, Nicole would be coming. She, she's already coming. She's planning on coming. She will, mm -hmm. uh, she'll be coming from Massachusetts. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, and actually you've got a lot easier, an easier route <laughs> than, than the folks. Uh, Possibly. In yeah. I was, I've yeah. flown down that way a few times before, never to Costa Rica and um, never really had a complicated struggle to go from Boston directly to, yeah, I think I've gone close to San Jose before. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll figure absolutely. it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that's perfect, Nicole. And you'd probably most likely, do you, do you when you've flown, have you flown directly like to one of the other countries or did you typically go through Atlanta or Miami? 
Uh, both. I've gone to Nicaragua once, and Mexico and Belize once or twice now, uh, <laughs> which I've done both ways. And I've gotten lucky with direct flights, I think twice, but um, okay. I'm not too worried about it. I figure it actually the same thing, the same logic. I would check back in January and see where the prices were at. And yeah. yeah. And there's and and those typically are for coming down from Boston, maybe that Atlanta, Miami, but sometimes you'll find going to Houston as well. Um, yes. send yeah. you over there and then down from Houston so yeah whichever I don't mind a, like a short stop there or a longer one if need be but, yeah <laughs> and that's the other thing if if someone is transiting and they want you know they end up with a long layover and they need help with a hotel arrangement or something like that or any transportation on the ground I can certainly work with you on arranging that too so you don't feel like oh no Uh, is the cell phone communication good from there? Can we call back home? Uh, yes. Yeah, the Wi-Fi is very good. You know, um, because there aren't really any storms at that time of the year, there really shouldn't be any issues with, you know, the, the sort of the flickering of power, the little brownouts or things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Any other questions? We know it's uh, around dinner time for everybody. So I just wanted to make sure that we responded to all of your questions. Okay. Is the food uh, always local food we get there? Yes. Yes, yes the, the food is most of it's is sourced locally. Yes, because it's such a, a rich agricultural country, and they just they have markets. They go to the market each day and bring it back. Uh, fish, if you're eating fish, they catch it, and it comes from the local fish mongers. And uh, yeah, so in some cases, we've even had them milk a cow for us and bring the fresh milk unpasteurized, so the oaks can have that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, just the thought of the food and just how, I don't know, we always talk about being at a higher vibration and such a great space to be eating such fresh food and experiencing meditation and pranayam with a better body, a healthier yeah. body, healthier mm -hmm. spirit. Yeah. Yep. Always. A cleaner one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny when we think about bananas, for instance, they had the, the property has bananas that grow on them. And so we, a few years ago, we had a group of folks and they were like, oh, I really want a banana. So one of the grounds people just went out and not took a whole bunch of bananas out and brought the whole thing up. And then everyone's like, these are the best bananas I've ever had in my life. You know, And they're just sitting there with a little little bananas and just peeling them and people are having multiple bananas and they we lasted us for a couple of days and also the avocado is second yeah. one. so they they call it aquacate and uh if you have not had avocado, if you're an avocado fan like i am i say that if i could only eat one food for the rest of my life it would be um avocado so and the avocado is tremendous Oh, and their and their classic little tico breakfast is usually some rice and beans and pico de gallo, um, their little version of salsa. Then they have tortillas, eggs, yeah, all so fresh. And then juice, and of course fruits, because you cannot not have the papaya and the pineapple and the banana. Mm. Anyone else? Yeah, um, <clears throat> roughly about how much extra cash do you think you should bring? I know you mentioned uh, like the tipping and whatnot, but like um, for like personal cash, how much approximately do you think? You know, you could, it kind of depends upon what it is. Like if you're like, oh, I love to collect art, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Michael speaking you know, from experience but you know <laughs> you're like 
so it's um, since most of the things are provided, so you don't have to do that. But if you say, you know, I'm interested in this, I, you know, if people, if they brought like a couple hundred dollars with them, that's sufficient. Uh, it's not like, you know, if you want to get a t-shirt or something, you know, you're going to spend, yeah, it depends upon where you go. So it could be $5, it could be $20. I mean, if you're looking for something, you know, more fancy, uh, like you want a special made, you know, hat or a bracelet, like I still have my Costa Rican bracelet that I paid, I think, $45 for six, something like that. It's about five years old now. I still wear it every day. Um, handmade. You want, some, uh, you want to buy some land down yeah, there? Yeah, you want to buy some land, you know. Right. You can actually buy a rocking chair. I bought a rocking chair. I brought it back. I sold it to someone else here, but I did have it. It just didn't quite fit in into the house, but it was the most comfortable rocking chair I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, and they will take, they will take credit cards uh, as well. But, uh, but yeah, if you want to just take cash, I would just say, you know, you bring a couple hundred dollars in us and then you can exchange it at the bank uh, as well. Or you can go to the cash machine and withdraw. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, Michael, any final thoughts or anything? We're good? Yeah, I'm I'm good unless someone has something else that they want to toss out there. Hello, someone's looking in the camera there. <laughs> awesome. Good. Um, thank you, Nicole. I'm glad it sounds wonderful. It's really it's going to be a fantastic trip. And I know some AWPs are going to be on that trip and then folks that have studied in the Dow program. It'd be really nice to get kind of a mix, the mix going. Um, bringing the the Dow and the AWP folks together, it'll be really very kind of cool. And as well as all of our other students who are seeking, um, you know, their continuing education. We have just such a phenomenal group of students, and it's just going to be cool to have this diverse mixture. So, all right. Well, if there are no more questions, um, we. Uh, reach out um, if you have any registration questions or um, any concerns, feel free to reach out to me. I'll handle um, the registration piece of it. And what we'll do is um, we will uh, make this PowerPoint available as a PDF within the next couple of days so that you have something to refer to um, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Thank you so very much, everybody. All Thank right. you, Sati, Bonnie, and Michael. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, Thank you all. I look forward to seeing you. Okay. You. We'll see you soon, everybody. Have a great Bye. evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.